So welcome to another video. This time I'm down a small pond which I've been fishing um, in the evenings after work a little bit over the last few weeks. It's taken me a little bit of time to work out where the fish are and how to catch them but I've finally kind of worked it out now I think. And there's the kiss of death for this session obviously but um, it's about 5 o'clock, 5.30 time and uh, I've come down to try to get some tench and I'm fishing tight against the reeds with a method feeder uh, and if we're lucky enough the other night you were able to see them uh, the reeds moving around as the fish were moving around which made for pretty exciting fishing um, you know it's a lovely time of day now it's uh, cooling down a little bit after a warm sunny day quiet because no one else on the pond and I've managed to walk up and, and get the peg that I wanted the swim that I wanted and uh, in fact the swim that I fished last night and did pretty well out of I had um, a session for about two and a half hours a very short session yesterday five casts five runs landed four fish biggest was uh, just over seven pound and uh, yeah they're all from the, the reed line that you can see so I thought I'd come down again Friday night now again just for a few hours I've got a little bit longer this time maybe three and a half hours and see if we can't do a little bit better so this is the rig I'm using it's uh, as you can see three grains of normal corn flavoured with some krill oil, hair rigged on a uh, size, uh, what size is that, that's a 12 uh, curve shank hook, uh, very short hook length, um, it's um, had the braid, the braided um, skin peeled off, so it's very supple, uh, method feeder, and I'm going to put um, krill ground bait on the method, put that on top, and cast out, and hopefully we'll get a bite. So let's see how it goes. So that's the swim I'm fishing, and as you can see, uh, there's quite a lot of snags out there. There's um, a lot of uh, sort of reeds. And you know, when it's nice and quiet like this, quite often you can see the reeds being knocked around as the fish rub against them. And that makes for quite exciting fishing, especially when you've got a bait out there and you can see the reeds rustling um, closer and closer to uh, where you've cast the bait out as the fish get closer to the bait and uh, sort of find the bait. But there's a few things you want to be doing if you're fishing up tight like this to reeds. Um, first of all, you want to be locked up tight so um, I haven't got the bait runner on it's disengaged so if a fish does take the bait like that oh, and I'm in So there you go, first fish of the day, a stunner. Again, you know, it's not a monster, but they're pristine fish in this pond. They're lovely, they fight like buggery. So let's weigh it and get it back really quickly so it stays in that great condition, but excellent start to the, uh, to the session. Really happy with that, really happy. So the scales are zeroed. Just over six. Lovely job. So let's get this lovely fish back, shall we? And it 
is gone. Lovely. So while we're waiting for some action, why not take a look at some of the uh, fish that I've caught over the last few weeks from this pond. So here's a little tip, I'm using three grains of corn on a hair. But what I do is I deliberately make sure that the smallest grain of corn is nearest the hook and then the uh, pieces get progressively a little bit larger and that just helps to give a little bit more movement of the bait around the hook and to expose the hook point a little bit more clearly. Um, so just a simple little thing, you know, I think it makes a little bit of difference. Um, but there you go. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but if you look at the edge of the reeds at the back of the little bay, you can see some of the reeds moving. You see that? That was really pronounced there. That's fish in amongst those reeds. So they're definitely out there. Just getting them to take the bait. Which they should do if they're hungry. There's nothing wrong with the bait. It's nice and smelly. Very visible. So they should they should find it and they should take it really. He says hopefully. Not really what we're after, is it? Let's put it back. Okay, so I've been getting finicky bites, little plucks at the bait, and then it goes dead and I've reeled in a couple of times now after that's happened and there's been no corn on the hair. So what I think's happening is I'm getting pestered with smaller fish just pecking at the sweet corn and eventually breaking the sweet corn off. The sweet corn's been frozen and then, then defrosted so it's not quite as firm as it might be fresh out of a can or a bag. And I think they're just getting away with the sweet corn nice and easily. So what I've done um, is I've got some wafters Central, central cell wafters and I've gone for these obviously because they're yellow and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to effectively replace the sweet corn 
with a trimmed down boilie. And so what I've done is I've just trimmed one of those little uh, 12 mil wafters just roughly into the shape of a piece of sweet corn and I'm going to put that on the hair instead. The fish exactly the same but just with a different hook bait and even if the roach and the rud do peck at this it won't come off so I know that I'm fishing still and it will give me the confidence when the bobbins just sat there after having those few pecks not really moving at least I'll have the confidence knowing that I've got the bait still on the hook it's still fishing and so I'll be more prepared to leave the bait in for a little bit longer than I normally would because I don't have to check you know to see whether the sweet corn's gone so let's see if that makes any difference Well, that got me almost instant results. Literally three, four minutes. And I had a screaming run. It was all locked up, the rod bent right round. And it got just too far in. And uh, there was a little bit of a battle. And eventually it gave, and this is what I came back with. One of the hazards of fishing where I'm fishing, unfortunately. But let's get it back, because that clearly made the difference. So because of that little fracas with that fish that I lost, I decided to fish a little bit further round to the left by about three metres. I, you probably can't see it very well on the camera, but there's a bit of floating reed here, and that's the other half of the reed that cut off during my scrap with the... Uh, potential I've just lost so that and that's kind of where I was fishing so I've gone and put the bait over in this very tiny little bay amongst the reeds here just thinking that I would have disturbed that other spot just a little bit too much give that a little spot you know 30 minutes rest and then go back over there because that is where I've been catching a lot of the fish over the last couple of weeks but I've moved it round I have had fish from that from this new spot um, before so it might, it might be, it might just produce, um, and if not, you know, 30 minutes, and I'll go put it back over in the hot spot. Well, unfortunately, yes, I'd lost another fish in those reeds again. You know, you sort of fight them for a few seconds and then it just goes rock solid. And you know that they've uh, done you on the reeds. But, um, yeah, it's a couple now that I've lost. 
only landed one, so they're beating me at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start casting a little bit further into the open water. I've not put any bait out yet, but I think I'm going to catapult some bait out to try to draw them out of the reeds a little bit, because I do like the security of those reeds. Um, but you know, it's getting on now. The sun's dropping and uh, we might be able to sort of coax them out of the reeds a little bit. Give us all a little bit more space, more space for them to feed and more space for me to uh, connect with them and uh, hopefully get them in. So um, yeah, let's try that. So it's uh, about 7.40 now and I've just lost another one which I got out into open water. It was going berserk. It was a small male. I'm assuming it was a male. It was a smaller fish, but it was a, assuming it's a male because it was just going mental. And yeah, it just threw the hook. Nothing really happened. Didn't do anything wrong. Uh, the hook just came out of its mouth. I've uh, moved on to like a full size boilie, so I'm not even trimming the boilies down now. And I'm fishing about a foot in front of the reeds. And uh, yeah, it's starting, I'm starting to get a little bit of action again. I've just lost that fish. Getting plenty of liners. So I think they probably are just finally kind of coming out of those reeds now. And hopefully I'll get another another shot before I pack up and go. Mm -hmm. So we're in. It's out in the clear at the moment. Got in. Wonderful. Let's take a look at it. Oh, what a lovely looking fish. Nice plump. Grumpy looking tench. That's just my uh, leader. These fish are lovely. Really good neck. Let's uh, unhook it and uh, weigh it and have a good look. Get it back in. Lovely. Well, there we have it, look. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Let's weigh it. Seven pound four. There it is, look. And there it goes.